Okay, so today we're gonna to take a look at go to statements. And the go to statements basically act like this. First, we have to define a label. Then we're gonna have a go to, and then specify which label you wanna to go to. That's pretty much it. So basically, what happens here is we have a label, we define a label up here. And this go to, basically, what it does is it transfers. The execution back to this point in code so for example if i see out as you can see we got an infinite loop and that is because so basically what happens here is we begin this main function this main function comes in here it does this uh, print statement so it see outs hello loop then it comes down here and sees a go-to statement and says, okay, so this go-to statement is telling me to go to the label called label, and it comes up here. You can call the label anything you want. So if you want, you can call it, for example, food. And it pretty much does the same thing. The one reason you may want to use a go to is to break out of nested for loops or nested loops in general. So, for example, if we wanted to break out of this loop, so let's say uh, we do something, so let's say on this line here. This is a contrived example, but basically, uh, it, let's say we define a new function. So we define a function foo or int foo, and it takes int i, int j, int a. And then it adds everything up and says, uh, let's see, or should I say return i plus j plus k is equal to, let's say, uh, five. So if we add i, j, and k together, if it equals five, we're gonna return uh, one, whoops, we're gonna return one, otherwise we're gonna return zero. Okay, so what we can do here is we can say foo, and we're gonna pass in i, j, and then k, and we're gonna do something like if, Foo. So basically what would happen is if I if I do it like this, what's gonna happen is it's gonna break out of this loop. So it's gonna break out of this nested loop, but it would not break out of this one or this one. So if you break out of this, it's still going to execute the remainder of the outer loop. And if you break out of this loop, it's going to execute the remainder of this loop. So basically what we have to do is instead of doing a break, so instead of doing a break statement like this, what we would want to do instead is we want to say go to exit loop. And then down here, just to make it a little more clear as to what I'm doing, Okay, so basically what we're doing here is I'm exiting this for loop. So I want to exit this for loop and the end of this for loop is right down here. So we can define a new label and we can say exit loop. And this is going to be our exit loop label. So basically what's going to happen is when we... Maybe I should make this a little smaller so you guys can see better. Okay, so basically what's going to happen here is when we execute this for loop, we're going to go from i is equal to 0 to i, um, I is 99. Then we're going to do the same for j, I'm going to do the same for k. And here what I'm doing is basically I'm testing if foo, i, j, and k, if they're equal to 5, then we're returning 1, otherwise we're returning 0. So again, i plus j plus k is equal to five if it is one otherwise zero so basically i'm doing something fairly simple here 
and I'm using the go to to step out of this loop. And this is a lot cleaner than having to check the exit here and then checking the exit here and then or should I say checking the exit here, here and then here to jump out of it. So I think this is the only example of using go to's that makes code cleaner than it would otherwise be. So let's actually print that out and see what happens. So, okay, so basically what we got here is i is equal to zero, j is equal to zero, k is equal to zero. So as soon as k reaches five, so I guess this makes sense, right? So, so basically what we did here is we returned is i plus j plus k equal to five, uh, returned one if it is, and returned zero if it's not. Um, Let's do something else. Let's do something like, okay, let's just change this value to 123 and see what happens. Okay, so let's see. So j is equal to 24, and then k is equal to 99, and then we get 123 from that. If you want to see what this would look like if we didn't use go to, uh, we would have to do something like this. Okay, so as an example, uh, if we were to remove this uh, go to uh, statement here and replace with a break, this code would not work anymore. So for example, if we do break, I think I also have to remove this exit loop also. Okay. So the problem that's happening here is that we are looping through this nested for loop. And when we loop through this, when we call break, what this does is it breaks out of this for loop, but it does not break out of the nested for loop, or should I say the outer for loop. So this outer for loop uh, continues running, even though we broke out of this one. So uh, what we are doing is we're breaking out of this, but we're not breaking, or should I say, we're breaking out of this for loop, but we're not breaking out of this for loop or this for loop. So uh, in order for you to be able to do that, um, the the only way I think, the only way I think you can break out of these three nested for loops is by setting a flag if you don't want to use a go to. So for example, you can say, uh, int, so we can say int bin zero. So if it's finished, I'm going to set it to, I'm going to set it to, let's see, I'm going to set it to one. And what we do here is we're going to break out of this. And then in this outer for loop, what we're going to do is we're going to say if bin, then we're going to break as well. And then in the outer for loop, again, if bin, break. So this isn't as clean. And because we didn't use a go to statement and instead we relied on it's kind of like flag systems, we have fin variable. When this fin variable, um, when I'm happy with whatever I get, I set it to one and then break out. And then I have to check this fin variable down here. I have to check this fin variable down here. And this is not clean whatsoever. This is like, th this code is a lot uglier than if I just simply used the go to. So for example, if I use a go to, So I can just do go to exit loop. I can delete this. I can delete this. Uncomment this. And as you can see, we get the same result and we yeah, so we get the same result and the code is a lot cleaner uh, with the go to 
than it is otherwise. But again, um, you will probably never have to use a go-to like professionally. And even when you're writing algorithms or doing some competitive programming or doing some projects, even then you probably don't want to use go-tos. Uh, the only use case for a go-to is just uh, jumping out of a nested for loop. So like this, if you have a triply nested for loop, quad triply nested for loop or whatever, uh, just use a go-to to jump out of it instead of having to uh, check on every um, nesting of the for loop if you should jump out or not. That's how you use go-to statements in C++ and I will see you later.